Hey, Integrity Fam, welcome back to our Academy sessions. And in today's episode, we're going to have a look at CSRF or cross-site request forgery. And we're going to have a look together what the basics of CSRF are, what it means, what an attacker can do with it. And yeah, let's jump straight into our lab of today. Once again, provided by Portswiga, thank you very much for that. And we do have a blog application. And we know by the lab description that the one thing we should do is to search for a possibility to change the victim's email address. And we've just seen that we've activated Burp and we go to my account because that usually is a little juicier. We do have some credentials provided by the application with the ones that we're seeing over here. And now we do see that our username is Wiener and our email is wiener at normaluser.net. So what we want to do is we want to start with testing out the functionality first just by itself. So we give it another email address. We say update email, and we do see that the change actually worked. So next up, we go to Burp, and we look for the request, and we do see a post request over here. And I want to use this one, send it to the repeater first, and then have another look together with you. So why are post requests interesting to us? Because they usually change something, whereas get requests usually retrieve something. And what we do see over here, we have a parameter called email. And if we, for example, say test one right now and we send it again to the application, we do see that the email address was changed again. But now we do see that the whole request is super cluttered. So we want to get a, we want to get rid of a lot of the headers that we don't really need, the HTTP headers. And we want to keep the content type because that's usually super important. And um, we want to leave the origin for now. So let's send it again. And we do see that it still works. So now we have an easier request to work with. And next up, I want to show you something which is generate CSERF POC in the engagement tools. A little warning over here, this only works with Burp Suite Professional, but there is a couple of tools out there, for example, Mert Tasky's CSERF POC generator that you can use if you're only having Burp Suite Community Edition. And that works the exact same way, but I will use the built-in Burp one for now. We can see that we can, for example, specify another email over here with test three, and we click on regenerate and then copy the HTML. And what that is, is it gives us an HTML that an attacker could host to trick his victim into clicking his malicious form. And the lab over here has like a server that you can use, where you can store your exploit and we can view the exploit over here. And now we do see a submit request button. And once we click that, we once again see that our email was changed. And that is because the browser sends this form that we just sent to the application with my cookies attached. And as I am logged in, I can obviously change my email address. We can even go one step further. We can add this little script tag over here that says document.forms and we're going to select zero for the first form in that document. The document is the entire HTML that we see, and we say submit. So once we do that, we have changed our payload, our website, our malicious website that we host to immediately send this form that we see over here once somebody visits it. And we're going to say test four just for the sake of visibility. And we're going to store this again on our server. So if we view the exploit right now, what we see is we quickly see the form popping up, but it's immediately submitted. So now we see test four. And this was all done with our own cookies right now. But what if you trick a victim into clicking that form with the victim's cookies? And Usually you would go for a phishing attack, but over here in the lab, we can just say deliver exploit to the victim. And now we do see that we have successfully solved the challenge. 
All right, if this was a little too fast for you, I wanna, as usual, reiterate all over again and see what we've learned. So first of all, we were talking about the general concept of a CSERF attack. CSERF standing for cross-site request forgery. And what that is, is that if you have a request being sent to an application that is changing something, in our case, an email address, you always have to be careful that you have some sort of extra secret which is sent within the HTTP request allowing you to change that information. And this could not only be an email address, this could also be, for example, a bank transfer where you want to transfer money. And the reason why is because if you don't have that extra secret, you will land in a situation where an attacker can craft a form, which is what we've been doing, that contains all the information you would usually send, like the email address in our example, and the attacker could host that on his malicious server. And the next thing he would have to do is to trick the victim into sending or into visiting the attacker's website first, and with that into sending that form out of his own browser. And the browser would attach the victim's cookies to this request. And with that, the victim would actually do whatever the attacker would want him to do. All right, this is it for today's session. If you're still not sure what CSRF is, because it's a little hard to explain in a video, make sure to check by our Academy website. You can have a good read over there. We have a lot of examples and additional videos. In the meantime, please give this video a like, subscribe in the top right corner, and I will talk to you folks soon.